You said that the road to happiness was long and winding. You said that the forest would get dark. And that the ground could shift here upon this hill we're climbing. No matter how close we get, we're still so far. But I trust we'll find the clearing. I'm trusting the trail. No matter what we're feeling, there's one way we can't fail. Let's just keep hiking. Let's plant our feet. Let's just keep hiking. Keep hiking with me. Hold my hand. Let's do another Brindis. You said the road of the six Let's do another one. <laughs> Salud. Salud. Buen camino. Unless we had some sort of map. And I could feel it in my chest just as our feet begged us to rest. I think this just might be the end of that. But I said I trust we'll find the clearing. I'm trusting the trail. No matter what we're feeling, there's one way we can't fail. Let's just keep hiking. Let's plant our feet. Let's just keep hiking. Keep hiking with me. Hold my hand. Tell me, my baby, what you're looking for. If it's the stars and the night sky, I can show you more. St. Anton Monastery Ruins, founded in 1146 by the French Order of Antonines, the present ruins of the monastery of St. Anton Abad stand alone in the nook of a small ravine, mostly to the left of the Camino, largely Gothic and from the 14th century. The monastery existed in service to pilgrims as a hospital. The Camino romantically passes under one of the monastery's half-crumbled arches. In the Middle Ages, this site contained a sheltered porch area where pilgrims who arrived after the monastery gates had been locked for the night could find a protected place to sleep. There, the monks also left food and drink in two stone niches set within the walls. The niches survive today, and pilgrims fill them with notes, poems, and other offerings. During the 11th to 14th centuries, an epidemic of ergot poisoning known as St. Anthony's Fire plagued Northern Europe. It most commonly came from rye grains infected by fungus. It could cause skin lesions, convulsions, hallucinations, and ultimately death. Interesting, people were cured of this illness after visiting San Anton Abad and other Antonine monasteries that rose to serve the ailing. One explanation was the good bread the monks distributed. Because the monks' bread was untainted with ergot, ill were able to clear the ergot from their system. Exercise apparently also helped in curing process, so it makes sense that 
as pilgrims exerted themselves physically on the Camino while eating uninfected bread and other substances, they were on their way to a natural cure. It also helped that on the Meseta, the main grains grown was and remains wheat, which is not as susceptible to the ergot as rye. Castillo de Castor Harris. This castle's medieval foundations carry aspects of the town's earlier occupants. The Visigoths built a castle here and incorporated aspects of the earlier Roman fortress into it. And the Romans doubtlessly used aspects of the Celtiberian castro. The builders of the medieval fortification used aspects of both Roman and Visigothic foundation. The medieval castle actually survived intact until 1755 when it crumbled into ruins during an earthquake that more famously destroyed Lisbon. Today about one third of the heavily walled fortified castle survives, most of it having crumbled into poetic heaps except for one central wall that stands out straight into the sky. If you want to understand the surrounding landscape's topography and enjoy exploring castle ruins, make the climb to the top of the hill and enjoy its view over the Maseto. Both Iberian, Christians, and Muslims controlled the territory from this hill on and off in the early Middle Ages. One of the most beautiful vistas of the Meseta is 3.5 kilometers, 2.2 miles after leaving Castro Jerez. A steep climb leads up the slope of the high ridge. Alto de Mastolaras, 900 meters or 2,953 feet, you are well rewarded for the hard effort to get here with limitless views of the yellow and green wheat fields of the Meseta. Looking like a billowing patchwork quilt. Stay here tonight. Cause I'm gonna take a moment to say what I know is true. Not everyone can change the world, but there are people who do. So thank you for living life with.
Cathedral de Santa Maria de Leon. Construction of the Cathedral de Santa Maria de Leon began in 1205. It was envisioned as a pure French Gothic cathedral, similar to Chartres Cathedral and to Paris's Saint Chapelle, where stained glass windows dominate and challenge the building's structural form. Expressive sculptures on the west entrance include the famous Virgin Blanca the most miraculous Mary of the medieval Camino who is celebrated in poetry and song. She stands at the Mullion, the pillar of central arch. Above her are scenes of the Last Judgment with Jesus and Majesty. But inside is where it gets intense and potentially transcendent. As soon as you pass the ticket kiosk and enter the west side of the nave, be prepared for the sensation of stepping into a saturated liquid light in hues of cobalt, indigo, golden yellow, ruby red, and emerald green. The delicate vertical lines of the towering Gothic walls and columns soar upward, drawing all your attention to the stained glass windows they hold. So numerous are the windows that the building's integrity is in fine balance. Is there enough stone to hold it up? So far, it survived 800 years with a lot of restoration.